Good evening and uh, thank you for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Here are the headlines we are tracking at this hour. TCS misses the mark in the fourth quarter. Dollar revenue and margins below estimates. On constant current terms, revenue growth slows to a 11 quarter low. Kriti Vasan will take over as the new CEO from the 1st of June. Inflation slows to a 15-month low in March. Consumer price index drops to 5.6% thanks to a sharp drop in food prices and base effect. Industrial output in February grows by 5.6% in line with estimates. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett says uh, the current problems plaguing banks are not like the 2008 crisis. Also adding that more bank failures are likely but the American depositor will not be hurt. Don't you see an end to this tremendous arc of recovery? And the answer is we don't see it in the data yet. The world's largest hospitality player does not see demand saturation just yet. The president of Marriott International also says India is a compelling market and increases the plan to open new hotels from, 2000, from 200 to 250. That's another exclusive. The Indian hotel market has unlimited potential to grow, says the global CEO of Hilton. Says India remains undersupplied and has only 2.6 million rooms against a population of 1.4 billion. That's another exclusive. Twitter CEO Elon Musk calls India's social media laws very strict. Adds that he would rather comply than have his employees go to jail. Tells the BBC Twitter is roughly at break even and calls his $44 billion acquisition quite painful and a roller coaster. Setback for Vedanta's Anil Agarwal, Supreme Court quashes a 6,000-acre land acquisition in Odisha for Vedanta University. Rules that Vedanta had malified intentions and the land belongs to farmers with no alternate source of income. After going off duty for two days, around 70 pilots of government-owned regional airline Alliance Air return to work. Airline CEO Vineet Su tells CNBC TV18 the management is negotiating with the pilots on their demand for minimum wage guarantee. 80% of airlines' daily operations have been restored. Four army personnel killed in a firing incident inside Batinda military station in Punjab. The police has registered a case against two unknown persons. The BJP announces candidates for 189 out of 220 more seats ahead of Karnataka elections gives tickets to 52 new faces. Chief Minister Bomai will contest from Shigao. Yajirappa makes way for San Vijender in his home town Shikaripura. Former Deputy Chief Minister Lakshman Savadi quits the party after being denied a ticket. We are Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and RJD leader Tejasvi Yadav meet Congress President Malikarjun Karge and Rahul Gandhi in Delhi. Nitish Kumar and Rahul Gandhi say they will unite to the opposition ahead of the, 2000, of the 2024 elections. m and Chairman Emeritus and India's oldest billionaire, Keshu Mahindra, dies at 99. He served as a chairman of the Mahindra Group for 48 years before passing on the baton to nephew Anand Mahindra in 2012. Keshu Mahindra played a pivotal role in transforming the company to a diversified conglomerate with interest in IT, real estate and hospitality. The top story tonight, the fourth quarter earnings season has begun and TCS has missed estimates. The IT bellwether missed the mark on margins and uh, revenue growth. On constant currency terms, the revenue growth was at its slowest pace in 11 quarters. Reema Tindulkar is here with the TCS report card. Reema, over to you. TCS misses the mark on revenues and margins in Q4. Constant currency revenue growth of 0.6% is lower than consensus expectations of 1%. Margins are flat at 24.5% versus the company's guidance of margins of 25%. The management in the press conference said the decline sentiment weakened in the month of February and March, impacting the revenues and uh, margins. And while budgets are not being cut, there are no large-scale project cancellations. Discretionary projects are being put on hold, and the client sentiment appears to have weakened uh, marginally. So there is a miss on revenues and uh, margins this time, and that's a bit disappointing. And even the near-term visibility, particularly in North America, appears to be a bit clouded. Uh, internals, 
BFSI growth has slowed down to 9.1%, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Retail continues to hold up well. The order book has been very strong at $10 billion. In fact, the company has clocked in the highest number of large deals this quarter. So the order book is holding up very, very well. Uh, attrition continues to take lower, 120 basis points down on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, while um, the hiring number has been fairly muted. About 800 employees have been added on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, K. Kriti Vasan will take over as the CEO and MD from 1st of June. Uh, this quarter has definitely come in weaker than what we originally anticipated and primarily coming out of uh, North America. Uh, North America uh, had slowed last quarter, but our expectation was that it is a cautionary stance from clients and based on our discussions with clients, and we had expected that it will bounce back into the first few months of the new year. Uh, that has obviously not happened. Calling it forward is difficult, so we are doing what is in our control in terms of positioning <coughs> ourselves to be able to handle it on either side of it. From a margin perspective, uh, what we, uh, like Rajesh pointed out, what we saw at the beginning of the year and how the macro environment as well as client sentiments turned increasingly negative getting into February as well as into March is something what reflected both on the revenue side and on the cost side. And if you look at it uh, with uh, discretionary spend getting impacted, the revenue gets impacted immediately. So on the BFSSI, last quarter itself we had called out, there are some, because of the interest rate and inflationary regime, like there have been issues in the insurance sector, capital market and mortgages. Uh, what changed this quarter more than anything to do with inflation or interest rates is sentiment, right? Like what happened with one in the banking sector, the, it actually, the sentiments are quite down and people are all not sure what's going to happen. And so there was a greater rush to preserve costs. Let's give the day's market action now. Sensex and Nifty have gained for the eighth straight day. Sensex gained over 230 points. Nifty gained about 90 points. Pharma stocks were the top gainers today along with bank stocks. Midcaps marginally outperformed the blue chips. Inflation has slowed to a 15-month low in March. The consumer price index has dropped to 5.6% thanks to a sharp drop in food prices and base effect. Industrial output in February has grown by 5.6% in line with estimates. Latha Vekatesh is here with more. Yes, sir. Inflation is not only in line with market expectation. The big relief is it's way below the 6% uh, uh, threshold, which the MPC is, you know, mandated to keep inflation below. So 5.66 that way is a big relief for RBI and MPC, considering that they have paused. The reasons are not far to uh, are not a mystery. After all, there was a base effect. March of 2022, prices had gone through the roof for uh, edible oils and uh, cereals and wheat because of the Ukraine war. So base effect. Was was anyway going to bring the inflation down. Uh, the additional co uh, uh, cause of relief for the Reserve Bank and the country is that cereals are down. That was the big fear that because of the heat wave or the unseasonable unseasonal rains, whether the cereal prices would go up, the fact that they've gone down month on month is a big relief for edible oils were always expected to be lower. That's another factor pulling it down. Perhaps the only uh, fly in the ointment is milk prices. They are up 0.6% month on month, but that was on expected lines. Pulses are also higher. So really, there is a protein inflation element for sure. Uh, the bigger relief is that core inflation is down to 5.8. You know, RBI has been repeatedly pointing out to the persistent core. So this will again come as a relief. Overall, it kind of vindicates uh, uh, the Reserve Bank stand that maybe we should pause and look ahead. Now, uh, the expectation is that both in April and May, inflation will fall below the 5% mark also. It will be 4 point something because of a huge base effect. April of uh, 2022 was 7.79% inflation. So we will definitely get a base that will push the inflation closer to the 4% mark. So unlikely the Reserve Bank is going to raise rates in the June uh, uh, meeting. So clearly it looks like uh, the peak of the current cycle has been reached, at least as of now. A word on the IIP number, it's a good number, 5.6%. It is on expected lines, but what is important to note is it is investment heavy. Infrastructure and capital goods are the two elements that have done very well, including power. 
and uh, the ones that have not done very well are consumer durables and even consumer non durables although it shows a growth it's a very low base so we shouldn't be impressed consumption is still weak you will have to uh, admit that perhaps is uh, the only uh, disturbing element in the macroeconomic numbers right now to the big exclusive of the day marriott international ceo anthony copuano does not see a demand saturation yet and he expects a business leisure travel trend to continue in a conversation with shireen bhan in bengaluru uh the ceo said india is a compelling market he said that they were hiking the india target on new hotels by 2025 from 200 to 250 the company set records for uh fees adjusted ebitda adjusted eps and remember we achieved those numbers with a very difficult january because of the the omicron variant and with china one of our largest markets largely locked down for 10 and a half months of the year So our forecast for 2023 is for continued strong growth. As you point out, we gave a relatively large uh range of revpar growth globally, 6 to 11%, so 100 or 200 basis points wider range than we might typically because of some of the economic uncertainty you described. But I I was in Boston last week or 2 weeks ago meeting with analysts. All of them ask the right logical questions. given the interest rate environment given inflation given socio-political instability in certain areas of the world don't you see an end to this tremendous arc of recovery and the answer is we don't see it in the data yet uh the first quarter should be really really strong when we report earnings in a few weeks uh we continue to see strong forward bookings the only caveat i would give you is for transient business we're dealing with a relatively short booking window So the ability to tell you forward bookings look good could change relatively quickly but we're just not seeing it in the data yet. Oh, well that that's good to hear that at least at this point in time demand visibility right. tells you that things are still holding. Uh I want to talk about India uh okay. because we are here uh and there's a lot of attention and focus on how compelling the India story is at this point in time. From Marriott's perspective, uh you know, you had set a target of 200 hotels by 2025. I believe you're hoping to up that number. Yeah, we hope our expectation is that between open and pipeline hotels we'll have at least 250 hotels across the country by 2025 we're in 40 cities today that should be 50 cities or more by 2025 and maybe most exciting to me that results in us creating 10,000 new jobs across india and from one top hospitality executive to another the indian hotel market has unlimited potential to grow says the global ceo of hilton speaking exclusively to shireen bahn hilton ceo said india remains undersupplied and is betting big on organic growth it's a it's a market that has huge domestic travel very big outbound market obviously in a in a post covid world um a very big population incredible growing middle class with uh, with significant desire to travel and very undersupplied from a hotel point of view so against the 1.4 billion people there's only 2.6 million rooms as you look at the next not just 10 years but 10 20 really the next 50 years in this market i think there is unlimited potential for growth would mna be a strategic distraction that you're willing to take on at this point in time if history is any <laughs> indicator of the future probably not uh, you know i've been at the company six, almost 16 years i used to be an mna person um and so i like mna i know how to do it and we've done none of it um and so i don't think it's likely that you know and that, and that's because we've had really good success in growing the company organically by not just adding brands or adding hotels with owners in different parts of the world to broaden our network effect but adding brands i mean when i got to the company we had nine brands we have 21 brands we have we've launched every one of those organically let's move on to uh, a statement by elon musk uh, india's it laws are very strict that's the word coming in from twitter boss elon musk speaking to the bbc musk said that he would rather comply with the laws than have his employees face consequences interestingly musk also added that twitter is roughly break even and inching towards being cash flow positive the rules in india for for what uh, can appear on social media are quite strict and we can't go beyond the laws of the country if, if we have a choice of either our people go to prison uh, or we comply with the laws we will comply with the laws 
Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal has nudged the Sunak government on the pro-Khalistan protests in London but assured the talks on a proposed FTA are continuing on a separate track. Goyal is speaking to our colleague uh, Sanjay Suri on the sidelines of the India-France Business Summit in Paris. Uh, while we do have serious concerns and reservations about the actions that have been taken or should have been taken, uh, particularly when it comes to India's sovereignty and integrity. And uh, we are looking for credible outcomes in the discussions on the political side or on the geopolitical side. I think the trade talks continue on a separate track. So but this won't be made a quid pro quo? Well, there's never a quid pro quo, but certainly credible action on the geopolitical front does support and encourage greater engagement. Time for a short break, but coming up, setback for Vedanta's Anil Agarwal. Supreme Court quashes a 6,000-acre land acquisition in Odisha for Vedanta University. More details when we return. of an Italian summer. Brought to you by Zodiac. Finest quality clothing. Welcome back to India Business, sir. India's offline pharmacies have uh, written to the regulator complaining about online pharmacies. The All India Organization of Chemists has told the Drug Control General of India that online pharmacies have not stopped their operations. In February, the DCGI had sent notices to several online pharmacies asking why action should not be taken against them for selling medicines without a license. A setback for Anil Agarwal, the Supreme Court has squashed Vedanta University's land acquisition bid in Odisha. The court has also imposed a cost of 5 lakh rupees on Anil Agarwal Foundation. Ashwin Kumar joins us with more. Ashmit, uh, give us some background of this case and where do things stand as of now? Well, this issue goes back all the way 17 years to 2006, and that's when Vedanta had sought to acquire about 15,000 acres of land. In fact, uh, the Odisha government of the day had authorized acquisition of about 12,000 crores, and in fact, 4,000 or nearly 4,000 acres of land had actually uh, been uh, taken over in terms of possession uh, by the Vedanta uh, group. Uh, now, what's important at this stage to understand is that this uh, process has in fact been undergoing a fair bit of litigation. In fact, in 2010, uh, the Odisha High Court had come down and had quashed uh, these uh, land acquisitions as being illegal. And that's the case uh, which in fact the Supreme Court has also decided. The Supreme Court upholding that Odisha High Court or judgment of 2010 and in doing so, quashing this land acquisition that was done uh, by Vedanta. Supreme Court holding unequivocally that this is simply not tenable as per the law of the land, that it reeks of favoritism, that it needs to be set aside. So towards that end, uh, the land that was acquired by Vedanta has in fact been uh, quashed, has been struck down. In fact, uh, the Supreme Court went on and accused uh, Vedanta group of having malified intentions with respect to the land uh, that they sought on acquiring. Not just that, uh, the Supreme Court goes a step further and says that the entire process of this land acquisition that was undertaken by the Odisha government on their part was also vitiated by favoritism, that there were undue benefits that were extended to the Vedanta group for uh, no logical reason. And that is something that the Apex Court has taken exception to. And with that, or with the squashing of uh, the land acquisition, has directed for the land to be returned to nearly 6,000 farmers. The Supreme Court holding that, look, these are farmers. They have no alternate sources of uh, revenue, of income, and therefore this land uh, needs to go to that. But uh, the Supreme Court, as in fact a final sign 
Kalinov has also slapped a cost of 5 lakh rupees uh, on uh, the, uh, the Anil Agarwal Foundation. So clearly, the Supreme Court taking very strong objection uh, to this land acquisition and quashing it squarely and coming down hard on the Orissa government as well. Thanks very much, Ashmit, for joining us with that big story coming in this evening. Let's uh, move on. After going off duty for two days, around 70 pilots of regional airline Alliance Air have returned to work. Airline CEO Vineet Su told CNBC TV18 that the management is negotiating with pilots on their demand for minimum wage guarantee. Madhya Mujawar joins us with more. Madhya, how many flights have been impacted due to the strike and what is the status now? Well, Alliance Air operates 130 daily flights, which are flown by around 200 pilots. Now, some, some 70 of these 200 pilots didn't report to work on the 10th and 11th of April in protest over minimum wage guarantee. This led to a shortage in pilots and the airline had to cancel some 70 flights. In the morning today, the CEO Vineet Sood confirmed to CNBC TV18 that these protesting pilots have returned to work and the management is in talks with them over their demands. The airline also issued a statement saying all flights are now operating as per schedule. We also learned that the Aviation Ministry too is looking into these demands. Let me quickly throw some light on what is minimum wage guarantee that Alliance Air pilots are seeking. Now, before COVID pandemic, pilots were getting assured minimum wages of 70 hours per month, irrespective of whether they fly those many hours or not. But during the COVID lockdown, as airlines faced huge losses, they paid pilots only for the hours they flew. Now, pilots find it unfair. They say with travel demand bouncing back and aircraft flying full, their salary structure must be restored to pre-COVID, which is 70 hours of minimum wage guarantee. And Alliance Air pilots are not alone. Pilots across airlines have been sharing similar resentment. Thanks very much, Madhya, for joining us with that uh, important update. Let's uh, take a quick check at uh, the headlines we are tracking. Four army personnel were killed in a firing incident inside Badinda military station Punjab. The police has registered a case against two unknown persons. BJP has announced candidates for uh, 189 out of 224 seats ahead of the Karnataka election. Chief Minister Bomai will contest from Shigao. Former Chief Minister Yadirappa has made way for son Vijender in home turf Shikaripura. Several senior leaders are upset over being dropped as candidates. Former Deputy CM Lakshman Savadi has quit the party after being denied a ticket. <laughs> Already we have spoken to the ones who are being replaced. We have told them the reasons and have also told them about the opportunity they will be getting later. BJP is a national party with discipline. It has the ability to face everything responsibly. Seniors have built the party and the party has in turn helped them grow. Hence, there is a good relationship and there will be no trouble regarding that. Bihar Chief Minister Nidish Kumar and his deputy Tejasvi Yadav met uh, Congress President Malikarjun Kharge and Rahul Gandhi in Delhi. Gandhi termed the meeting which took place at Kharge's residence as a historic step to unite the opposition. BJP leader and Minister Anurag Thakur took a dig at the opposition, calling it Maha Thug Bandhan. Opposition ko ek karne mein ek bohut etihasik kadam liya gaya hai. Aapne sawal puchha कितने ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज को इकट्ठा करना है देखिए ये एक प्रोसेस है और ऑपोजिशन का जो देश के लिए विजन है उसको हम डेवलप करेंगे और जितनी भी पार्टियां हमारे साथ चलेंगी उनको हम सबको एक साथ लेकर जो देश में आइडियोलॉजिकल लड़ाई चल रही है विचारधारा की लड़ाई चल रही है उसको लड़ेंगे Time for our final report of the day. India's oldest billionaire and a man who headed the Mahindra Group for 48 years. Keshu Mahindra passed away today. The 99-year-old was responsible for turning the company from a steel trading firm into a diversified group of companies with stakes in automobiles, aerospace, housing, tourism and much more. Here's a look at the life of Keshu Mahindra and his contribution to one of India's biggest industrial powerhouses. Born in 1923 in Shimla, Keshub Mahindra joined the Mahindra Group in 1947, two years after the company was launched by his father, J.C. Mahindra. 
Keshu Mahindra had just graduated from Wharton and worked through the company's ranks to become the chairman 16 years later. Over the next 48 years as chairman, Keshu Mahindra worked towards diversifying Mahindra and Mahindra from an assembler of Willys Jeeps to an industrial conglomerate with interests in automobiles, IT, real estate, tourism, aerospace, defense and much more. A member of the Prime Minister's Council on Trade and Industry for six years till 2010, Keshu Mahindra retired in 2012. He went on to serve on the boards of Steel Authority of India, Tata Chemicals, ICICI and was also the founder chairman of Housing and Urban Development Corporation Limited. He was also honoured by the French government for his contribution to industry. The doyen of Indian industry was admired by leading businessmen and will be remembered for his compassion, humility, people-centric approach and strong business acumen. With that, it's a wrap of this edition of India Business Hour. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.